All right, my video today is not a whole lot of fun because I bought a truck on uh, Big Iron Auctions and I'm pretty disappointed with how the whole deal went down. Um, you know, I bought a lot, I've done a lot of business with Richie Brothers and, uh, and these guys on my hat, Prep Sweetman, and I feel like those two have never misrepresented something like in this situation. Um, but no, as a disclaimer, I'm accepting the vehicle as the way it is. I left with it, um, you know, um, I'm accepting responsibility for what I paid for. I'm not asking for my money back. Um, I don't think that this pertains to all, I know this doesn't pertain to all big iron reps and, and people who sell with big iron because um, my, my local representative is a great guy and he does a good job to, to properly represent um, people's equipment and do what he can for the buyer and the seller. So I'm going to go through a quick little story, and I've got more videos coming up of how this whole deal ended up unfolding for us. It turned into quite the, quite the project. But anyways, um, overall, I'm thankful how the day went. It went as good as a bad day could go. And, um, and yeah, but anyways, um, so what happened, I buy this truck on Big Iron. It's up by Omaha. Um, they've got a video of it running around. The description has your basic stuff, like what it has, what options it had when it was new, things like that. Um, it says, uh, let's go to the disclaimer. Disclaimer, exhaust and brake line leak. And you can hear the exhaust ticking in the video. It's got a pretty pronounced tick. Um, this truck particularly has a 7.3 um, power stroke in it. I've run into that a lot between the crush, the crush O-rings on the up pipes and the, and the turbo gaskets and the manifolds cracking, things like that. I've seen all of that. I've never seen what I'm about to get into here. Um, so it says, exhaust and brake line leak. Dump bed raises, but will not drop property properly. Rusty hinges, uh, bitter encouraged, encouraged to personal, personally inspect. Well, I'm 500 miles away from there, so I didn't personally inspect it. Um, it had a video of it running around, um, and in my experience with other big iron stuff, if it's got a video, it's usually somewhat roadworthy. This truck is so far from roadworthy, it makes me sick. Um, it's sick that they that uh, this outfit I bought it from, the way they handled the transaction. The way they they did not care what happened after it was sold, they're peddling shit equipment. Not to, but anyways, um, so I, I take this information. I think well, I can probably fix it up there if I got to put a manifold on it. Um, we'll just do that up there and drive her home because I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't think it was necessary to run my Peterbilt all the way up there and haul her home because that's my preferred preferred road trip vehicle, you know. But um, with fuel being high, I'm like, well, if I can save a little money and, and drive, uh, we'll take my service truck, so i got some tools, my one ton there, the six liter, and um, we'll, we'll run it like that, and just, my initial um, plan was to drive the six liter up with a, my bumper pull trailer, hook the bumper pull to the 650, and pull the six liter home with that 650. Um, it's, a weir it's weird how some days, you know, so this is crazy, I was going to take that bumper pull trailer up there on my way to pick up a friend that was going to ride with me who's a saint of a guy because everything that I drag him along through gets into this, turns into these kind of things. Um, on my way to pick him up, I, I have heavy tires on. I like those 16 ply trailer tires. I had them aired up to, like not, I don't know, 80 or 90 PSI. And I hit a pothole just perfect on the side of the road and it bent the front axle. I mean, bent that 7,000 pound axle like right now. And I'm like, shoot. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I'm not gonna scout these good expensive tires on a thousand mile trip. Um, I'm just going to leave this here and we'll drive the 6 liter back. So we leave the trailer here. Thank goodness we did. Um, get up there. Okay, so let's. I'm going to step back a little. Um, that morning, before the day we were leaving, because they want you to call 24 hours in advance, I called this guy up and I said, Hey, I'm coming to get this uh, truck. Will you be around? And he goes, Yep, 7.30 to 3. Don't be there a minute after 3. Okay. Um, he goes, you're planning on hauling it, right? I said, no, I was planning on fixing it and driving it home. Well, don't fix it in our parking lot. Hangs up. That's how that conversation went. went. Okay, you know, I get that. You know, people don't want people throwing oil and stuff all over their parking lot, but uh, that was an awfully vague description for what I was getting into. So we drive up there, stop in Lincoln, see you, buddy. Yeah, roll into Omaha. That, well, it's not quite Omaha. It's, it's west of Omaha, a little town called Waterloo. We roll into uh, Waterloo, and I will go inside first thing in the morning. Get there at 
And I walk into my paper, this guy meets me in their office, their front office, it's a dealership, and uh, takes a picture of my paid in full invoice here, and uh, says, we'll bring it around, um, we'll bring it around for you, we'll meet you outside. That's all he says. So we go back outside, we wait for almost 45 minutes for him to get this thing fired up out of the back lot and bring it around. He rolls it around, rolls it through the gate, and me and my, uh, the guy that went with me were approaching this truck from the passenger side. He hits the brakes, leaves it running, throws the door out, throws the door open, and we're headed towards the front of the truck to come around to meet him. Goes around the back of the truck, races back inside, and shuts the door. And it's like, doesn't say anything to us. It's like, okay. Well, it's obvious at this point, this is one of those guys, you might as well pull your pants down and talk to your own ass instead of talking to him. Because he just, he doesn't care, whatever. So, and in my, my other videos about how this day went, you'll see me refer to this guy as Seabass, because that's what he reminds me of, that guy named Seabass from Dumb and Dumber. Looks like him, walks like him, got an attitude like him. So anyways, Seabass here, jets inside, shuts the door. I'm like, well, at this point I'm realizing how this deal's about to unfold. Um, so I'm looking for this exhaust leak, because that's my prominent power problem to get home. I walk around this truck, I roll the hood open, looking, 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 there's nothing on the passenger side, it looks all right. Go to the driver's side, man, it's ticking hard. I look down, I'm watching the manifold looking for a crack, and I, I can't see anything in the manifold. It has rusted through the head in three exhaust ports. The size, I mean, you could put your thumb through these holes. Um, somebody had tried to patch one with a washer and a bolt, and some of that, I think it's like a, that exhaust wrap. Um, the truck is leaking brake fluid out of the master cylinder, sitting there dripping while it's running. Power steering's leaking. Um, I mean, the hole under the cab is frosted out. It's like, golly, I saw the pictures. Well, like I said, I'm not, I'm not blaming anybody. I took this responsibility on. I took the chance. But this is a buyer beware, okay? Um, especially if you're going to buy from a certain machinery company up by Omaha. Um, I guess they sell a lot of stuff on Big Iron, another outfit here in town. Bought a truck from them that was allegedly a runner. Kind of the same shady deal went down by the time they got it back. Um, they, they, again, they weren't able to drive it home. This truck that's getting peddled as a runner. Um, you know, that's one thing I pretty about big, uh, Richie Brothers is you've got dead row. And in my opinion, both these trucks would have been dead row trucks. Um, but anyways, they get it back. The turbo's out so bad it's pouring oil out the exhaust. Needs an engine. Needs tons of work. And these guys are, are whatever about it. But with Richie Brothers, this is a, or not Richie Brothers, Big Iron, here's your other disclaimer. <clears throat> as soon as you get in that thing and you leave the property, from what I understand from my big iron rep, you have accepted the, the, the condition of that vehicle and you're liable. And so I left with it, knowing that, that, that I had um, a chance to dispute that if I left it there. But you know, at the same time, what's it worth disputing with guys like that that are so cowardly they won't, they won't tell you what's going on. But anyways, so back to the story. We get it, I see this guy gets inside. I'm looking, find the exhaust manifold. Bolt, uh, holes, not holes in the manifold, holes in the head. I'll show you in one of the next videos. There's holes in the head. Well, I guess we'll get it out of this parking lot because I can tell this guy's already, you know, you know those people you are just like, I don't want to be within 300 miles of you because nothing's going to go well. This is one of those guys. This is a sea bass over here. He's, you know, I'm sure 10, 15 minutes, they're probably going to get me out of there because he's very clear. Don't work on that thing in my parking lot. Doesn't say, hey, it's not roadworthy at all. And then the brake line leak. I've got the master cylinder leak. I'm like, golly, I could maybe make it home on that thing leaking if I just keep up on it. Well, through further inspection, they had vice grips on one of the brake lines in the back. Vice grips. This guy, you know, and I show up without a trailer. It's obvious I'm taking, I'm driving this truck somewhere. Doesn't say anything. There's vice grips on the brake line. You know, and it's like, I'm, I'm thankful that this happened to me, and I'm thankful that it, that it happened um, for a few reasons. One, that I could, I'm fortunately in a place to overcome a problem like that. We ended up, um, I ended up buying a trailer up there. Um, we built a gooseneck hitch in the tractor supply parking lot for my, my service truck. Um, welded one up and built one out of some channel and, um, nope. Anyways, um, built one, bought a trailer, you know, um, and, and we loaded her up, thank goodness. And I mean, just the way the whole day unfolded, the way that everybody else we ran into that day was, was super helpful and wanted to help get us going um, from the iron company down there in Lincoln um, to the guy I bought the trailer from on Marketplace. The trailer turned out to be perfect. It had a winch on it because this truck does not, so I get out on, let's get back, 
get out on the road, we drive it to a truck stop down the road where we can leave it until we sort out all these, these new challenges we've come across. So I start messaging everybody on Facebook Marketplace, like, hey, I'm really interested in your trailer. I, um, I'll go to the bank and get cash, whatever we got to do, but I need a trailer like yesterday. So <clears throat> I think I found this one trailer, and it's a deck over, 35 foot, big old heavy goose. And I'm like, well, this guy will get a hold of me, let's do it. So he, I mean, send him my number, he says, he'll call me. That guy actually never called me. Another guy that I sent my number to had called me. So we head out of town. Um, to go look at this trailer that I thought was a big, big, heavy gooseneck, which I wasn't excited about, but um, you, you, what are you going to do? I'm not going to spend all day screwing around for the perfect trailer. I go to this guy's place, I'm like, wow, I saw that trailer, but I didn't think it was the, the guy that called me. It was the perfect trailer. It fit the truck perfect. It had a winch on it. I didn't even know I needed it. It had a 10,000-pound winch. That piece of crap, uh, 650, wouldn't even pull itself up the ramp, so we had to winch that thing on. It wouldn't run 15 miles an hour down the road. Um, and, and so I guess you'll see that in all the in my other videos. It took me a little while to put it together and how the whole day unfolded. Just building the hitch, finding the trailer, going to the bank, driving between Lincoln and Omaha to get my parts wrangled up in this trailer. And but everybody else we ran into that day was super helpful and, and, and really good people. Um, you know, and kind of the same thing with the big iron guys. There's one rep that, I, in my opinion, did a bad job. Does not represent the rest of the company. Um, you know, but you got to look out because this stuff, this stuff happens. And I'm glad it happened to me. We'll, we'll recover. And I got to put a lot more money in this truck. I bought it as a flipper. Um, you know, I'm obviously going to have to put heads on it, um, do a fair amount of rust and body work. Um, but you know, clean it up and, and sell. I want to sell this this truck as when somebody comes to buy it, I don't have to tuck my tail and cower around the truck and jet back inside. You know, it's something I, I put my name on and be proud of. So, anyways, this is a. Um, it's kind of the quick rerun of how this deal went down. Um, you know, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, I'm thankful for how the day went with the other people we ran into and finding a trailer and and the old six liter made it home good and and um, you know it, it was a good day, but it's just a bummer that there's people out peddling crap like this. Um, you know, because if there was some, if I was somebody that didn't have much money and that was kind of their last little little purchase to get their company going or they depended on it and took a chance, they'd be up creek so bad it's not even funny. I wouldn't sell this truck to somebody for 2000 bucks right now. Um, it's a bummer deal. Um, I'm, in, I'm not saying Big Iron's a bad company. I'm not saying uh, the company I bought it from is potentially a bad company, but they're shady. That company in Fern Waterloo is shady as they get. And that salesman looks like sea bass. He's a coward of a man. But anyways, um, that's my quick run through. I'll put up a, a clip. You know, and there's, I've had good luck with Ritchie Brothers, my favorite auction company to buy equipment from. I feel like it's the most well represented stuff around. These guys right there, Krebs Wiedemann. They're not near as big as Big Iron, they're not as big as Ritchie Brothers, but if you buy something from them online, they do a lot of business on auction time. Um, there's another auctioneer out of, uh, out of Carpenter, Dale Ely Auctioneers, good genuine guy. That stuff, those are two outfits I would gladly buy something sight unseen from and take their word for it because they're not out to screw you around. This guy, this big iron rep up there, yeah, and as well as the salesman at that equipment company in Waterloo, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust him any farther than I could throw him. But uh, thanks for watching. I hope this uh, this helps somebody kind of be leery of what they're getting into with these online auctions. I've had good luck with most most stuff so far. This is the first one that's like, well. You win some, you lose some. We got a lot to recover to be able to to get this truck cleaned up and get it down the road as a half decent product. Um, so, yeah, that's how it went down. You can you can wait. We'll get a video up of uh, of um, how the rest of how the day unfolded between building the hitch and all that other stuff. But I really appreciate you guys watching, and um, um, I'll do another video here soon of, of what the condition of this truck and it's crazy. It's a crazy deal. But um, just beware on them online auctions. It's a real bummer that they did this. Um, but I'm glad it happened to me and not somebody else. And, 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 you know, God blessed us the rest of that day. It was a good day. So thanks for watching.